want you to see some exciting pictures and uh, hear some fun tales when we get back. It was a very important trip and there's a lot of things that I'm going to have to say <laughs> that are very emotional, so I'm starting out that way, but I'll make it through, I promise. Um, we asked John's very special exclusive group of collectors known as the First Class Club um, to write an essay about a, um, a type of destination and we received all these beautiful essays and we took them to New York City. We, went, we met with my friend Ainsley Earhart. She is a um, national uh, news correspondent with Fox News. I so met her at this beautiful historic location and she told us the winning essay and it was to a place of worship. She just had beautiful reasons why she thought that was the best essay. Uh, it was written by uh, Dr. Susan Catlett here of Houston. She's a doctor. She's the co-founder of an organization called Autism in Action. I emailed the FCC members and I said, it's a place of worship. And probably within a few hours, I got an email from, you know, her, Dr. Lynn Dickens. And it was, I think, one sentence and said, you have to go to Jerusalem. The apartment. Ryan found the apartment online. We were uh, planning on getting a hotel, but with the pricing of the hotel, Ryan thought, well, let's just see what an apartment would be. So he finds this apartment, three stories, totally renovated, glass staircase. We have had about four of these cocktail parties. We, we hype them up and we call, we call them members only parties for the first class club. And, uh, you know, they've just been a real bonding experience for the group. It was just about a week prior to our trip to Israel. There was a room downstairs that I used a lot for my work there because it was, the, you know, the walls were like real thick concrete. They were built, had a little sofa, I could put my feet up and do some of the, some of the paintings there, not just at the studio. Everyone was able to attend, except unfortunately the, the Franklins couldn't make it and my parents are members, they live in South Carolina, they could not make it. Then you have the main living area, with the bed, kitchen, bathroom, another bathroom, and then you had the upper deck, which had a full 360 of... Tel Aviv. You know, we always sit in a circle and sometimes it's funny because people make comments like it's like it's AA and everybody's an art addict. The art studio was in the same area. It was a nice walk, which I love. I, I'm glad it wasn't like right next door because I like the walk. One of the one of the special uh, benefits of being a first class club member this year, John would deliver a prayer card to a location in Jerusalem of their choosing. So it's beautiful. There was, uh, on the way there, these little cafes in the middle of the street, you know, on the Esplanade, and I'd get like an espresso and whatever, something to eat, and then go on to the studio. Richard Jennings thanked me and shook my hand and said this was the best one yet. Uh, John was to the right, and then Susan Catlett was to the left of me. Uh, then the Scott Nevet Hill, uh, Dan and Pam Ellis, Joan and Robin, JP and Alfredo, Lynn, Richard, and John. So it was a uh, really nice walk every day. And then on the way back, of course, maybe champagne after this or so. <laughs> Always try to include something new or something that's going to make it even better this year. So in past years, it was a video component or it was a Skype chat. Wonderful. We had a couple schedule for each day. So this year, because the location was Jerusalem, I sent them these very small prayer cards with these embossed gold stickers on them. and. So this year that had improved a whole lot more and there were more people that we were able to Skype with this year that we weren't able to last year because I think that's such a special thing is to have that live chat on Skype. You know, people then sealed them and mailed them back to me in an envelope I provided to them. It was very meaningful to have that person in mind when you're there. How lucky and honored we were to be the messengers of these prayer cards to these places in Jerusalem and go to this location that is inspired with this person and then getting this special note card that we put in this little metal box that I painted. So John created a tin, a beautiful tin, that had his grid on it and it had all 11 prayer cards because John and I also had a prayer card. And we gave to Natasha at the end of the trip for her to put all her thoughts or prayers into for herself. Where were they delivered? Okay, now this is, I'll do my best. I think that is the exchange that makes 
this trip so special? The first was Dr. Catlett. Hers was delivered to the Church of All Nations. The Garden of Gethsemane is a, totally adjacent to the Church of All Nations, so that's where we dropped Julio's. Because you're really thinking about each person that is in this group. Three couples picked the Wailing Wall, so that was Scott and Yvette Hill. Richard and Joan Jennings. And Dan and Pam Ellis. And we get to the Pool of Bethesda, and there's a church built there. I'm like, well, and it's like this is where uh, Mary was born. Dr. Dickens was <laughs> dropped in uh, the Valley of Hell. All these cathedrals and buildings were, were built because of things that happened long ago. Um, she told about this place. You know, hell is like a real place in Jerusalem, in case you didn't know that. It's like, it's like right there. I, didn't, I, I wouldn't think we're going to get in the water, but I'm just thinking we're going to see a pool. Like, I just want to see some water. I'm so hot. And she described it as being looking like a burnt out pit of hell, which in history I think it was. But according to our guide, apparently they're like modernizing the pit of hell because it looked quite nice. And there was like <laughs> people having a picnic down there. Pool, Bethesda, water, no water. It's all dried up. It's like a hole in the ground. It's like hotter than hot. My parents, uh, Lindsay, went to um, the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum, which was very moving. She shows us a cavern. It was like stairs down like this. 60 degrees in there. JP and Alfredo's went to the Pool of Bethesda. And I used water from there for the paintings as part of the medium. She got a water bottle and we filled it up. And I used some of the water from the Dead Sea. Yeah. Robin and Jones went to the Al Mamal, um, I could be pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, Contemporary Art Museum. John and my card went to the Wool Rose Garden. Franklin, sorry, um, I love them. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Yes. Yeah. I got it, that's all of them. They weren't in the circle, so that, that's why I thought of them, okay. of their site last. If you know anything about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it is basically where Christ was crucified and buried. Okay, I found out about John's art studio. And so here's in me planning, I googled Tel Aviv art studio. Thank you for a snack. You know, maybe due to the fact that um, the studio, my studio is called the Tel Aviv art studio, which is great help with searching. And uh, it's owned by Natasha. Hi. Hello. At the beach, she said, I just thought this was so much a sign of her character. Well, my full name is Natasha Esther Miller Goodman. Um, and I, you know, I don't want the rest of your money. I'd love to just have a little piece of your art. I'm actually from a really small town in South Africa. And when I finished school, I moved to Cape Town, where I studied fine art. That was really cool. And Natasha, who I rented the studio from, when we got there, just said, would y'all be willing to do a workshop? And I'm like, absolutely. And then I did a postgraduate in teaching. So I actually trained as a high school art teacher. She organized an artist workshop that John presented at the art studio. Meeting people in person and talking about the art movement of escapism is going to make a difference because those people will remember a lot more about it. Also added that I will help you with your piece if you want me to. He, he did some work on some of their pieces. On, I think it was on Natasha's too. Like he, he um, broke the canvas basically. And also his work is just so energetic. But of course the main part of it was the message of, the art, of escapism, of going back to your birthright to be yourself, to be authentic, to take off all the crap that we're told we have to put on us. John does not consider anything a mistake. Like the whole, whole escapist movement mm -hmm. and the way he kind of like mentors people to become successful. We all want to be able to express ourselves in whatever our art form. I don't care if someone's a painter. I'm here to help you get through the process, not to paint like me, but for you to paint like you. When we decided to do this workshop, Brian sent me a message to say, um, let's get the artist to send John a question and we can discuss it during the workshop. So I said I'd do that, and I think my question to them was, how can I be John and Ryan put together? <laughs> <laughs> that then led to her getting media in a major Israeli publication called Haaretz. Uh, and she has an incredible husband, Herschel, who is the coach and captain of the cricket team. Um, we're both strong and smart and a success in our own right. And so when... So I think we had a bond. 
really became great friends with them, and they took us to the airport, and when they dropped us off, we, they got out of the car, and we talked for like 30 minutes before we even went to the airport. I mean, so they're a really special couple, so I hope that's a relationship that will keep evolving and going on. I think the series is amazing, and such a true representation and reflection of their trip.